Hey, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to create our very first plugin for the art engine. And that's going to be an input plugin. Now, as always, we're going to make use of the art engine template, which is an environment for us to run the art engine. But I've customized this to use TypeScript. And the reason is we're going to create our plugin in TypeScript. As always, go to the tags over here and download the corresponding tag for this video. In this case, we are going to download YT3. You can download the zip or you can git install this tag. Now that is ready, let's go and unzip this on our desktop. And when we have done so, we are going to open that folder in Visual Studio Code and there it is. So let's go ahead and open that. The next thing that I would like to do is install the dependencies. So at the top, click on new terminal and here is our terminal. Now you can run npm install. I'm using yarn, so I'm just going to use yarn to install all the dependencies. I'm going to briefly run over the new structure and just what has changed now that this project is TypeScript and no longer just pure JavaScript. So the first notable change is that index.js is no longer that, but index.ts because we're using TypeScript. Secondly, if you look in the package.json, I've got a build and a start command. Start will actually build this uh, project into a dist folder and then run it. So to run your project, you can either do npm start or I can say yarn start as well. And when I do so, it's going to build the project and run the art engine like normal. The only difference is, is that it creates this dist folder, which contains all the compiled code. And there you can see is the index.js. But when you go ahead and edit the art engine, you don't have to mess around with this. You edit it in the index.ts file. And then again, once you are done, you're just simply going to run yarn start or npm start and it's going to run it. Um, in the dist folder. And something to pay attention to is that because we are running technically the index from dist, we need to, whenever we specify routes or, or paths, I would say, we can go one level back. And that is because we are technically running it from this folder. So we need to access, let's say, the data file uh, or folder that is outside of dist. And that just is the main change. Apart from that, you can delete the dist folder because it will be created every time that you run the project. But this is normal for people who know how to code. I'm just explaining this so that everyone is comfortable who are not that skilled in coding, but still wants to run the art engine as normal. Now, what else has changed? Well, I also have a custom folder. And in this custom folder is exactly what you've seen in the documentation. These are example plugins that you can uh, alter, make use of, and just use as a reference for creating your own custom plugins. And today we are going to actually be focusing on creating our very first input plugin. So we're going to adapt the code to make our own plugin for our very own use case. And that's going to be very exciting. Now, before we start creating our own plugin, let's do some cleanup. So in the index.ts file, what I'd like us to do is actually get rid of all these uh, plugins as it stands. So I'm going to empty out the inputs, the generators, uh, all of these renderers can go because we're going to be creating our own one uh, and this as well. So you're going to be left with this kind of structure where we just have the art engine and no plugins. So that means if we run the art engine, nothing's going to happen or nothing it's going to really generate, right? So this is what we want. And now we're going to focus on creating our own plugin. But what is the purpose uh, of creating our own plugins? So at the end of the day, what do we want to generate? So I have an idea. And my idea is that if we can create a set of plugins that can take a list of words and at the end of the day, create for us seed phrases, much like that you get in crypto, that would be really, really cool. Now, keep in mind, you will not be able to use these seed phrases. They're going to be absolutely just fake. Uh, but it is to illustrate what the art engine is capable of. And I think through this experiment, you're going to realize 
how you can make use of different media formats and how layering works and all these wonderful things. So let's start off by introducing a data source. Now with the previous art engine, we have this data folder. Now I'm not going to use these uh, data pieces. So I'm going to just delete this. And then instead in here, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this words.json. Now I already have a list of words uh, in JSON format. So as you can see, it's simply an array and then we have random words going all the way down. I believe there's about 200 words. You can write some random words out or get a list somewhere. Um, it's fairly straightforward. So we have words.json with a word list. This will be our data source. Now that we have this, let's close this off and let's go and open in the custom tab, the input uh, file. Now you can write these files wherever you want to. I'm just going to make use of this example and edit it. So I'm going to get rid of this example over here and give it a meaningful name. How about words dash list dash input. And the idea here is to make it descriptive enough for someone who's using the plugin to kind of know what it does, right? So words list input, meaning that we are going to accept some sort of list into this input. And now that we have renamed our file, let's go and rename our class. So instead of example input, this will be words list input. All right, great. So now let's cover what's happening here. And to make it even more simple to understand, I'm going to take away this interface and simply say any in there. And let's do any here as well. This is the very basic input plugin that you can write. We have our class and it implements the basic, the base input interface, which is generic. And we pass it in a type that we want to return from this function via the load function. Okay. Now what happens? The art engine will load the plugin and it will call in init, passing in these props. These props, if we hold command and click on this, we can see that it passes in a seed. So the art engine gives us a seed. So we can expect a seed to be passed into props and we can optionally use it or not. But it does need to have this init function regardless. If we take it away, we will see that it complains and says that this uh, does not comply with this interface. So we need to have at least the init and the load function returning a promise of whatever type you are specifying. In this case, we are giving it any, which is not really helpful. So we're going to specify a type that we want to return from this inputs plugin. Now, when designing your plugins, it's important to understand what data this plugin is going to return because the art engine is going to save the, the returned values and then make it available to the next plugins. In this case, the plugins that's going to run after the inputs are the generators. So what information will generators find useful? Well, I think we should start off by creating a word interface and the word interface will have a word which is going to be of type string. And then we also may be just going to have a word length. Okay. So let's have word length. I'm just trying to think because we can get it probably of the array uh, or of the prototype. But just to illustrate my point, we're going to read this list and then return back an interface that is an object with the actual word. And we're going to have the word length so that we can use that data in the generator in the next video. When we have our interface, we are now going to pass this in. So we're going to say this is an input interface returning this word interface. And we also need to return this here on the load function. Now we can see our type checking or TypeScript is checking our return values and it, and it sees that it doesn't match up. There's a problem because this that's being returned doesn't look like this. So let's go and fix that. So to make TypeScript happy, we can instead return an object and we need a word. In this case, we'll just put test. And we also need a word length, in this case, maybe five. Now you'll see that everything is perfectly fine. We've got test and a length of five. So technically, this plugin is done. 
we can now actually run it, but it's not very useful. However, I am going to import this into the art engine, run it and show you the export or actually the data that it exports. So let's go and import our new plugin inside the index.ts file. So here in inputs, how inputs work is it accepts a key value pair. Our key can be something like words because that's the data set. And then we're going to say, give us a new words list uh, plugin for the inputs and the data being returned, we're going to store in this key. Now VS Code automatically imported our new plugin here at the top for us, which is brilliant. And that's it. Now we're going to run the art engine, but firstly, I'm going to clear the cache by simply deleting it because I want to show you something inside the cache when it's generated. In the terminal, let's go and run the art engine. And then once that ran, we can open the cache. And now we can actually look at the inputs JSON file. And guess what? There's words and exactly what the plugin returned to us. Our test and the word length of five. You will also notice because there were no generators, uh, renderers or even exporters. Well, exporters don't get cached. However, all these other um, cache files are empty. So this is also a good way when you are writing plugins to kind of verify what data is actually being exported. And just to show you, we can add multiple of these uh, inputs. So we can just say, here's another one with test. And if I save this, I run it and I go to the inputs, I can see there's a words, which is this and a test key which has these values. And that is just to illustrate that multiple inputs can actually work together and you don't only have to use a specific one. We can, for example, use the image input here as well. But for now, let's get rid of this because we are only going to make use of one key. But what do we want to do now? Remember, we have this words list and we would actually like to consume this in some way through our plugin and have the plugin export all that data for us in this format. So let's go and implement that. So where will all this magic happen? Well, this is in the load function. And instead of just returning this, we are actually going to return a list of these objects. So uh, firstly, let's create a constant variable and we'll call this mapped words. And this will be actually of type word interface, which would be an array. Okay. And we're going to start this off to be an empty array so that we can populate this uh, when we read the file. The file that we need to read is this word list. And how do we get access to this? Well, because we have a class, we can also create a constructor function. So let's create our constructor. And in the constructor, we're going to actually import the string or the path to this file for us to be able to read it. Now we're not going to do anything in the constructor, although I'm going to make use of a private variable. And this will be our word list, let's just say path, maybe. And this will be of type string. So we're just going to make use of this path that's going to be passed in when we initialize uh, this component. Okay, so what is the next thing we need? Well, we will actually need to import here at the top the FS module, and then we're going to read the JSON from a file. So let's call this, this will be our JSON data. This will come from FS read file sync. And now we can pass it in our word list path like so. And now when we have the JSON data, maybe we can create our words, which will be of type string array. And this is simply going to be where we say JSON dot pass. And what we want to pass is our JSON data. This will convert this into our string array of words. Now we're not done yet because the last step is for us to actually um, map these words. So let's grab our variable here at the top. And we now simply going to say that this um, is going to be equal to our words dot map and map takes in this lovely function that will return to us something. So here we can just say 
what we want to return is actually this structure over here. So I'm going to paste that in there. Um, and this we can just say is our word. And for the word, we actually want to pass in the word, right? And for this, we're just going to say that we want to pass in the word dot length. And this should now return to us. Um, this cannot change because it's a constant. So let's turn this into a uh, let. And then lastly, we just simply need to return our mapped words. Now notice that we have a error on this return statement because technically we want to return an array, but our interface says that we are expected to purely return one object. So to change this, we're going to say, that instead let's return a word interface array and here as well on the load function. And there we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have completed making our very first input plugin. But let's go and test it out and see if it does work. So in the index.ts, we can see that our new input requires something. It requires us to pass in a path. So let's give it a path. Firstly, I'm going to import this base path because I know this is then the current directory. We're going to say forward slash dot dot because we have to go one back because remember this code will compile and run in the dist folder. And then we need to go to the data folder and inside data we've got words dot json and that should be our file. Now, technically, when we run our plugin, the inputs plugin is going to run. And if we go to our inputs cache file, we can now exactly see that we get this new structure underneath this words key. And that is a list of the structure that we are uh, returning from that input. So we get a word and the words length for each word in this list. And this is our very first step. Our input plugin is now done. And now we can move on to a generator plugin that can consume this data. And that's exactly what we will do in the next video. So just to reiterate, we have made a word list plugin that takes this data and essentially gives us this back, ready for the next plugin to use. I really hope that you enjoyed creating the word list uh, input plugin with me today. If you did, please like this video and comment below uh, if you enjoyed it, if you are struggling. Uh, remember, you can always go to our Discord channel. Just go to hashlips.io, follow the link and go and join the Discord channel if you are struggling with anything and you need some help from other developers. Apart from that, I really hope that you're going to have an amazing day, first of all. And then in the next video, we're going to create some generator plugin that is going to be absolutely so cool. So I cannot wait to see you there. Cheers for now.